In today's video, I'll be showing you how to build and animate this awesome nomorphic infographic slide. Let's get started. Special thanks to RR Graph Design for providing the free versatile nomorphic template that I'm using in this video. If you would like to download those demo slides for free, you can do so using the link in the description below. And if you'd like the full version, which includes over 200 slides, you can also do that at the link in the description. And if you use a lot of slides at work, RR Graph Design provides a custom slide service starting at just $4 a slide. Check it out at the link in the description. As always, we'll start with a blank slide. We'll go to the Design tab, we'll go to Format Background, and then we'll change our background color to hex code ECF0F3. Then we'll go back to the Home tab, and under Shapes, we'll create a rounded rectangle by clicking and dragging while holding Shift, we'll make this a square. Then we'll go over to the Size menu, we'll click the Size dropdown, we'll click Lock Aspect Ratio to keep these the same, and we'll change these height and width to 8 centimeters. Then we'll grab the Rotation Handle, and while holding Shift, we'll turn this to 45 degrees. Then we'll click the Position dropdown on this menu and change the Horizontal Position to 15.2 centimeters, and the Vertical Position to 2.25 centimeters. Then we'll click on the drop shadow section, we'll go under shadow, we'll click on the presets, and we'll click this first preset. Change the shadow color to hex code 0D0D0D, set the transparency at 86%, the size at 96%, the blur at 45, and change the distance to 31. Then click on the fill tab, click on line, select no line, and then click on slide background fill for the fill. Next, we'll simply copy and paste using Commander Control C and Commander Control V, and then we'll place the new object directly in front until it snaps in place. And then in the format pane, go back to the drop shadow, select the color, and change the color to FFFFFF. Set the transparency to 50%, the size to 98%, the blur at 20 points, change the angle to 225, and set the distance to 18. Finally, reselect the object and duplicate again using Commander Control C, Commander Control V, and align it in front. And then grab the handle and hold Shift and Control while reducing the size to just slightly reduce the size, maybe to about 10 by 10 centimeters. You're going to go to the shadow presets, you're going to remove the preset, and then you'll come back over to the fill tab. We'll stay at solid fill and we'll just change the fill color to anything that stands out. We will be changing this later. This is just a placeholder for now. Then just simply click and drag over all the objects and while holding shift, click the front one to deselect it. And then on a Mac, you'll hit command option G. On a PC, you can just hit control G to group. After you've grouped, simply hit command or control C, command or control V to paste and drag this down out of the way. Then go back to the size section in the format pane. Click the lock aspect ratio again, resize to 6.8 by 6.8 centimeters, change the horizontal position to 10.75 centimeters, and the vertical position to 9.15. Next, go back up to shapes and create a circle by clicking and dragging while holding shift. With the size panel still selected, click on lock aspect ratio and change the height and width to 3.5. Then grab your circle and drag it until it snaps into place in the center of the smaller rounded rectangles here. Then go back over to drop shadow in the menu, click on the presets, and click on an outer drop shadow. Change the shadow color to the gray we just used, and if you forgot, that's hex code 0D0D0D. Then change the transparency to 86%, the size to 96%, the blur to 32, keep the angle at 45, and change the distance to 18. Then come over to the Fill tab, change to Slide Background Fill, and select No Line. Finally, reselect the circle and hit Command or Control C, Command or Control V to paste, and then drag the new circle into place over the old one. Then head back over to the Shadow tab, change the shadow to our light shadow, which was FFFFFF, change the transparency to 50%, the size to 98, change the blur to 20, the angle to 225, and the distance to 15. Next, we'll go back to the Home tab, we'll go to Shapes, and we'll create a pie. Click and drag while holding Shift, head over to the Format tab under Size, again, select Lock Aspect Ratio, and change the height and width to both 5.7. Then grab your pie and center it on the circles you just created. Then change the handle positions, change this right one first, and bring it up perfectly to the top until your pie disappears. Then grab the other handle and drag it around to about a third of the way around the circle. Then under the Shape Format tab, hit Send Backwards twice to send it behind the two circles. Then head to your Fill tab, select No Line, and select Gradient Fill. Click on the first stop, should be at 16% position, and change the color to hex code 2 
2DC 5A2 and select the second gradient stop placed at 84% position and change its hex code to 49B2F5. Then head over to the drop shadow, select the first preset, change the shadow color we've been using, set the transparency at 77%, the size to 95%, the blur to 48, leave the angle at 45 and change the distance to 43. Then reselect your shape, hit Command or Control C, Command or Control V to duplicate, come back over to the size panel, keep the aspect ratio locked, change the height and width to 5.3. Then grab your pie and recenter it on the circles again. Rotate your handle position starting with the second one, bring it about there and move the first one anywhere so that you still have overlap between the pies. So nowhere past here, it's gotta be on this side of the first pie. And then you'll come up in the shape format tab and send backwards three times, one, two, three. Now it's behind the circles and behind your other pie. Then you'll come back over to the fill tab and on the first gradient stop, you're gonna change to hex code F16690. And this will be at 16%. And on the second stop, this will be 84%. And you'll change to hex code FFAE44. Now we'll come back to the home tab. We're gonna to go to the shape menu and we're gonna create another rounded rectangle right about here by clicking and dragging while holding shift to keep this a square. Come back to the size menu, click lock aspect ratio and change the height and width to 1.5 centimeters. Set the horizontal position to 23 centimeters and the vertical position to 11.3 centimeters. Come back to the fill tab, select no line and then fill with the color hex code e 0 e 8 E -E. Next, you'll go back to the home tab and under picture, select picture from file. And we're gonna insert this speech bubble smile picture and I will include a link to download this picture in the description. Once you've inserted the picture, simply drag it in place and center it over the rectangle you just created. Then select both of those objects by clicking and dragging and hit Option Command G or just Control G to group. Next, go back again to the Home tab. Under Shapes, we're gonna create a plain old rectangle this time and right about here, click and drag while holding Shift to create a square. Go back to the Size pane, lock the Aspect Ratio and set the Height and Width to 0.25 centimeters. Set the Horizontal Position to 4 centimeters and set the Vertical Position to 9.75 centimeters. Then go back to the Fill section, select No Line and change the Solid Fill to Hex Code F16690 and that is the the same pink that we just used in this gradient. With the shape still selected, hit Command or Control C, Command or Control V twice to paste two more versions of the square. Select the second square and under fill change to hex code FFAE44, which is gonna be the yellow we just used. Then go to the size tab and change the vertical position to 9.75. Finally, select the third square, Change the fill color to hex code 2DC5A2, which is the green we just used, and then go to the size tab, change the vertical position to 9.75, and change the horizontal position to 5.3 centimeters. Now select all three squares, go up to a line and distribute them horizontally. Next, go back to the home tab and under shapes, we're gonna create an arrow. Click and drag while holding shift to draw a straight line. Go over to the size pane, change the width to 4.75 centimeters, change the horizontal position to 17.45 centimeters and change the vertical position to 13.6. Then go back to the fill tab and change the line color to our solid gray, which is hex code 2C4166. Change the width here to one point. Go to dash type and select the fourth one on the menu, the plain dash, and then under end arrow type, change it to the ball. Next, we'll come up to the top left and we'll double click to create a text box. And we're gonna type all in one project planner. Next, click to select the whole text box and change to Roboto font, which you can download for free online or you can use any font of your choice. Then we'll change the size to 48. We'll double click on planner and make it bold. Then we'll select the whole text box and we're gonna change the text color to the same color we just used for the arrow, which is gonna be hex code 2C4166. Finally, we'll go back to the size tab. We'll change the horizontal position to three 3.65 and we'll change the vertical position to 2.9 centimeters. Then we'll reselect the text box and command or control C, command or control V to paste, drag it down here a little bit, select all of the text and type 72 and capital M for 72 million. Click on the text box again, change the size to 28, then click and drag the text box until it horizontally centers on the circles here and set the vertical position to 11.6 centimeters. Then with 72M selected, click and drag while holding alter option and shift to duplicate the text box, then double click the text and type income. Select the text box, change the font to open sans regular, change the font size to 12, grab the text box and while holding shift, drag it until it horizontally centers under the rest of these objects, then click on the size tab and change the vertical position to 12.8. Then click and drag over all these objects to select them. And while holding shift, 
Click on the rounded rectangle group to deselect that one and then hit command option G or control G on a PC to group all of these objects together. And as you can see, these are all grouped now. Next, we'll click on the income text box and command or control C, command or control V to paste, drag this over here somewhere, double click on the text and change it to this weird Latin stuff. While it's selected, change the font size to 14, go to the size tab and change the horizontal position to 22.75 and the vertical position to 13.1. And don't worry, this is just placeholder Latin text. This is very common in the design world. If you're not used to it, it just means that you're supposed to insert your own text here. Then duplicate this text box again, select the text within, and and do a hyphen John Doe Industries. Then select the whole text box, reduce the font size to 12, change the vertical position to 14.8, go back to the fill tab and change the text color to hex code 8A9888. And finally, hold shift and click the Latin text and group them together with command option G or control G. And now it's time to make our photo placeholder. So select this placeholder object from before, hit command or control X to cut, then go up to view and click on slide master. So what I want you to do is click on the first one, go down to the last one, hold shift, click it, and hit delete. We're getting rid of all of those. Then click on the mother master slide, which is this big one at the top here, and mouse over everything, click and drag, and delete it all. And do the same thing with this first slide here. Then click back on the mother master slide, and under solid fill, we're gonna change this to our same background color that we used before, which if you've forgotten, is hex code ECF0F3. And as you can see, when we change that color, it changes the colors in these slides below. Right now we only have one, but it changes that color as well. We'll click on this smaller first slide. We're gonna right click and hit rename, and we'll rename this image placeholder. Then in the slide master menu, we're gonna click on insert placeholder, and we're gonna hit picture. And we'll draw on the slide right about here, just an image placeholder. Then you need to hit command or control V to paste the object that we cut out of the slide earlier, and then grab the picture insert and drag it so that it totally surrounds the object we just inserted. And then this is very important. With the picture placeholder still selected, hold shift and click on the object as well. Go up to shape format, go to merge shapes and select intersect. And now you're going to have a picture placeholder where if you click it and drag it around, you can see it's in the shape that we just created. Now you don't actually wanna drag this around because we want it to be perfectly in place. If we drag it around, then when we go back to our slide, it's gonna be in the wrong area. So make sure that you leave it exactly where you pasted the object. So when you paste that object, don't move the object, make sure that you move only the picture placeholder. And then we wanna change this placeholder text. So we're gonna click up here, you see there's a bullet point, just hit backspace and change this to image placeholder. Then double click the text, go back to the home tab, and we're gonna bump this size down to about 14. And then we'll change the text color just to one of the grays we used earlier. Now go up to your mother master slide, go over to shapes, and insert a line. Click and drag while holding shift to draw a horizontal line. Then come over to the size tab in the format shape pane and change the width to 1.11 centimeters. Horizontal position should be at zero and vertical position should be at 18. Then come over to the fill tab and change our fill color to hex code 2C4166. Then click and drag while holding shift to take this all the way to the right side. And then click again while holding shift and it should snap to the right side of the slide. Then double click to insert a text box over here and type out 2021 space two slashes, another space, and multi-project presentation. Now, of course, this can be any text that you want, but this is just our demo text. Grab this text box and drag it up until it snaps into place with the lines. Then go back to the home tab and change the font to open sans. Change the font size to 10.5 and change the color to the same gray we've been using, which again is 2C4166. You'll have to recenter this on the lines, so probably just wait to do that. Then go back over to the size and change the horizontal position to 1.5 centimeters. Then go back to the fill tab and go to text options. And we actually wanna change this transparency to 60% and do the same for these two lines. And finally, double click on all this text, come up to the spacing and change the spacing to loose. Then go back to the slide master tab and click on the drop down under master layout and then select page number. This will insert the slide number down here. So click on the text box, go to the home tab, change to open sans, size 10.5, change the color to our 2C4166, grab the text box, center it on the lines, then go over to size in the format shape pane and change the horizontal position to 24.5. And finally, go back to the slide master, select the slide that we're working with down here and select footers, and you'll see the page number appear here. Then go up to this button, the close master button, click it. And as you can see, we've inserted our footer but not our slide number. So all we need to do is go up to layout and change to image placeholder. And now we can see the image placeholder has appeared, but we're still missing our page number. Not a problem. Go to the insert tab, 
click on header and footer, and in this section, select slide number and hit apply to all. And there we go, our slide number is in place. Now let's animate. First, open the animation tab and open the animation pane. We'll select this square first, and we're gonna start with a spinner in. So select the spinner, and under timing, change to with previous, keep the duration at half a second, change the delay to 0.25 seconds. Then reselect the square in the slide panel, go up to path animation and select lines. Under effect options, select right, and then we're going to adjust only the end point of this square. So select the square, select the animation, and then click and drag while holding shift on this circle and align it perfectly with the green square. Then click the effect options in the drop down menu. If they're not selected, select smooth start and smooth end and select auto reverse. Change the start timing to with previous, change the duration to 0.5 seconds and change the delay to 0.25 seconds. Then click on the pink square back over in the field, click on the animation painter and paint it onto the yellow square. For the yellow square, select the path over in the animation pane, zoom in if you need to, and then click and drag on the red circle while holding shift and drag it right over the pink square. Then go up to duration and change the duration to 0.6 seconds. And then also for the yellow square, click on the spinner and change its duration to 0.6 seconds as well. And finally, click on the yellow square, select the animation painter and paint onto the green square. Select the green square's line animation and drag the end point over onto the pink square as well and change the duration to 0.7 seconds. Then select its spinner as well and change its duration to 0.7 seconds. Then we'll zoom out again so we can get a better overview and select the title text and add a fade in animation. Then under timing, change the start to with previous. Then reselect the title text in the field, go to path animation and select lines. Under effect options, deselect smooth start so we just have smooth end, change the start to with previous and change the duration to one second. Then grab the red handle here and adjust into place right about there. So it goes a little down and to the right and you can zoom in if you need to. Then reselect the effect in the pane, go to effect options and select reverse path direction. That way it's gonna move from bottom right to top left, but we didn't actually have to adjust the whole box so that we lost our starting position. Next, reselect the title text in the slide pane, click on animation painter and paint to the smaller rectangles. Select the fade in animation for the rectangles under timing, change the delay to 0.25 seconds. And then do the same for the path animation, change the delay to 0.25. Reselect the title in the slide field, click on animation painter and paint to the circle group as well. For this group, select both effects and change the delay to 0.5 seconds for each of these. Next, select the straight arrow connector and add a wipe in animation. Under effect options on the right side menu, change to from left, change the timing to with previous and change the delay to 0.75 seconds. Then select the smaller rectangle group, select the animation painter and select the little rectangle with the speech bubble. Under the animation pane, change each of the delays for the effects to 0.75 seconds and then select the little speech bubble group, select the animation painter and paint to the Latin text group down here. You won't need to adjust any settings from there. Then select the title text, select the animation painter and paint to the large rectangle group as well. So we have everything animated on this slide except the picture placeholder. And as you can see, I've just dropped in a little logo that I made for a fictional company uh, to be our placeholder for now. So we're actually gonna go back to the slide master to animate the picture placeholder. So just select the title text and go back to the animation tab if you've closed it select the animation painter and then go back to view and slide master and paint the animation onto the image placeholder. And look at that, we have animated it perfectly. Let's hit close master. Let's go back to the animation tab and the animation painter has been deselected. We should be good to go. So let's test this thing out. Boom, look at that, that is beautiful. Thanks for following along with me today. And if you liked this video, please click that like button, hit subscribe and click that notification bell so you can get notified every time I create a new video like this one. Special thanks again to RR Graph Design for providing the template for today's video and for providing the Numorphic demo pack for free. Again, link to that is in the description and link to the full PowerPoint with over 200 slides in it is available in the description as well. Definitely go check them out. It's a really cool company. They do some great work. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.